All right. In this video, what we're going to do is we're going to find the values of the six trigonometric functions, sine, cosine, tangent, cosecant, secant, and cotangent, when we're given the coordinates of a point on the terminal side of an angle. Okay? So, if we have a if we know a point here, we have our point coordinates, x, y, and they lie on the terminal side of an angle, then we know this distance from here to here would be x, okay, because when we plot the point, we go over x units, and then the distance from here to here would be y, because when we plot the point, we go over x and we go up y, okay, and then the distance from here, from 0, 0 to where the point is, that's R. Okay? And, and we also know that this, this is a right angle. Alright. <coughs> so, and, and one, one other thing to keep in mind too, that this is an angle that's in standard position. So what do we mean by standard position? Well, that means the vertex is at 0, 0, and the initial side of the angle, which is this side right here, the initial side, lies along the positive x-axis, and then we rotate the angle. Okay? We rotate this side, and it, and it stops here. So, uh, sine theta is equal to y over r, cosine theta is x over r, and tangent theta is y over x. And then cosecant is r over y, secant is r over x, and cotangent is x over y. And, and really, is if you can just remember these, then, then you'll know the cosecant, secant, and cotangent because if you know sine theta, cosecant is just the reciprocal. If you know cosine, secant is the reciprocal of cosine and cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent. Alright, so let's take a look at the example we have here. It says find the six trigonometric functions of theta if theta is in standard position and that's what we talked about here. The vertex at 0, 0 the initial side is along the positive x-axis, okay? And the point negative 2, 3 is on the terminal side of theta, okay? So they give us the point negative 2, 3. So the best thing to do is draw a picture. All right, so, so let's draw a picture of this thing. So we're going to draw our xy coordinate system, and we'll plot the point negative 2, 3, and, and I like to just come on up here and just plot it in whichever quadrant it's in. You know, I mean, it's not necessary that you have to go over 2 and up exactly 3. Just the important thing is making sure you're in the correct quadrant. And so there's the terminal side. Okay, This is the point negative 2, 3. All right. And so, here's theta, okay. and that's a right angle. So now we need to label our triangle. So x is negative 2, so this is the x value. And it's important, you have to make sure you label it negative 2, not 2. That's going to make a difference when we start finding our trig functions, so we'll get the correct signs. And then our y value is 3. So that's 3. So what we need to do here is we need to find r. Okay. Well, to find r, we can use the Pythagorean theorem. See, this is the hypotenuse, and we know the hypotenuse squared is equal to this squared plus this squared. So I've got r squared is equal to 3 squared plus negative 2 squared. So r squared is equal to, that's 3 squared is 9, negative 2 squared is 4, so 9 plus 4 is 13, and so r is equal to 
the square root of 13. And, and of course when we take square root it can be plus or minus but r, this r value is always going to be positive. So it's always the positive one. So this is going to be the square root of 13. So now that we have our uh, now that we have our drawing, now we can find, and we have it labeled, we can find the six trig functions. Alright, right. so first let's go ahead and find sine theta. And remember what sine theta was. Sine theta is, let's get, come back up here and look, sine theta is y over r. Okay. So let's go back down here. So sine theta is y over r. So that's 3 over the square root of 13. And then we'll rationalize the denominator. So I'm going to multiply the numerator and denominator by square root of 13 over square root of 13. And so this is going to give us 3 square root of 13 over and then square root of 13 times the square root of 13 is the square root of 169 and the square root of 169 is 13 or one way you can look at it is if you uh, if you're multiplying two square roots and you have the same thing under both square roots then your answer is just what's underneath the square root so here's sine theta 3 square root of 13 over 13 now let's look for cosine theta. All right. So cosine theta, if you remember, is x over r. So cosine theta is x over r. So that's going to be negative 2 over the square root of 13. So negative 2 over the square root of 13. And once again, I'll rationalize the denominator. So I'm going to multiply numerator and denominator by square root of 13 over square root of 13, which is going to give me negative square root of negative 2 square root of 13 over, and then square root of 13 times square root of 13 is just 13. Now we can find tangent theta. And remember, tangent theta is y over x. So let's look at this. y over x. So here's our y value, 3. Here's our x value, negative 2. So tangent is y, which is 3, over x, which is negative 2. Which, and then I like to put the negative sign out in front. That It's fine if you leave it like this. Okay. And so there's tangent theta. Now we need to find cosecant, secant, and cotangent. All right. So let's just come up here real quick. Remember, cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. Secant is the reciprocal of cosine. And cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent. So if we come up here for sine theta, there's sine theta, so we can say cosecant theta is equal to the reciprocal of sine. All right, so before we do that, let's look at this right quick. Here's, here's what we got for sine theta. Okay. Now, if we take this value here and we do the reciprocal, we're going to get 13 over 3 square root of 13. And that's fine. There's nothing wrong with doing that. But notice here what happens. We have a radical in the denominator and we would have to rationalize the denominator again. Okay. So, and like I said, there's nothing wrong with doing that. It would just be a little bit of extra work for you. So, what I like to do is you see this value I got before I rationalize the denominator, 3 over square root of 13? Well, 
If I take the reciprocal of that, I get square root of 13 over 3. And you can see I don't have a radical in the denominator. I don't have to rationalize the denominator. So here would be our solution for cosecant theta. Now, I mean, I'm not saying that you cannot take the reciprocal of this. You can. You can do the reciprocal, rationalize the denominator, and you'll end up with this same thing here. Okay. Either way is correct. It's just this, by taking the reciprocal before you rationalize the denominator, is less work. All right. So now let's just do secant theta. Okay. And once again, like I just explained, see if I take the reciprocal of that, I'm going to have to rationalize the denominator. So I'm going to come up to this part here, and I'm going to take the reciprocal of that, and then I don't have to worry about rationalizing the denominator. So I'm going to get negative square root of 13 over 2. And then I have cotangent theta and this one doesn't matter because there's no radical, so I'll take the reciprocal of negative 3 halves, which is negative 2 thirds. And so here's my six trig functions. Uh, here's sine, cosine, tangent, cosecant, secant, and cotangent. And I hope this video helped. Uh, all right. And check out my other videos. Thanks.